The more our motor racing knowledge grows, the more things we're able to measure and improve. But what exactly are the teams here in Formula E monitoring? And how does that help them on the racetrack and help to improve the cars on our roads too? At the moment, Formula E cars can measure and record up to 200 different data channels. So an engineer's life is truly dominated by data, downloading and analysing over a gigabyte of information from the electronic control unit, or ECU, on board these cars over the course of race day. A Formula E car can generate up to 200 different data channels from a vast array of sensors all around the car. Inside the wheels, there are things like brake temperature sensors, tyre pressure sensors, the gearbox has sensors inside, measuring the position of internal components, allowing the team to make sure they're getting the most efficient gear shift possible. The electric motor and the battery have a huge number of sensors, monitoring everything from temperatures and the state of charge of each individual cell within that battery. There are accelerometers measuring g-forces, drivers' pedals even have position sensors on, and the internal parts of the suspension, like dampers, have potentiometers measuring the position so the team know exactly how the car is handling over the lumps and bumps of a typical stick circuit. It's a huge amount of data all there at the team's disposal to make sure they're getting the absolute maximum out of their Formula E cars. Roger, there's lots of unique things about Formula E, but the fact that it has this compact one-day format where everything happens on the same day, that must make the data and the learning you get from it even more critical. Absolutely. I mean, we generate a tremendous amount of data coming off the car, but we're up against this time crunch of having the ability to be able to analyse that data and to actually generate useful information from it. The data is that objective view of what the car is doing. It's physical movements of suspension, it's changes in hydraulic pressure, it's changes in water temperature, whatever it may be. We have to wait until the car comes back into the garage to then plug in, to upload that data off the car, and then you know, start to analyse it that way. We run some you know, predictive routines that say during the course of the race as the, the battery state of charge changes, certain things with the car will change, which means you, know, you as a driver need to make this adjustment in the cockpit. OK, you are P11 right now, P11 right now after the stops. There are three cars ahead of you with much less energy, so likely you will catch a pass. For example, as the battery gets hotter and hotter, we start to lose some regen. That means that the, the amount of braking that we get from the rear axle changes, which means the brake distribution changes across the car. So we then need to tell the driver to compensate for that with the mechanical adjustment in the car that he has to change the brake bias. Brake back eight, two clicks rearward on the brake bias. So what are the most important channels for you over the course of the day on the Saturday here in Formula E that you're looking at? The safety critical aspects of the car, things like battery temperatures, motor temperatures, things that could actually cause a problem on the, the racetrack for the car to stop. So in collecting all this data, the free practice sessions on a Saturday morning must be absolutely crucial because after that you're into qualifying and it's critical time. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we, we get a couple of opportunities during free practice to run the cars at qualifying power level. And we might try a couple of different setup changes on the car and then what we have to do from that period when free practice two ends to when qualifying starts is to make a decision on where we're going to go with setup you know do we want this rear spring or do we want that rear spring can we get away with dropping the front ride height another couple of millimeters he's going to be going that little bit faster that means maybe the car's going to be a touch lower will that be a problem? So we have to make those sort of decisions and you never know whether you got it right or wrong until after he comes back in and says, that was great or that was horrible and the car was bottoming. You know, you've got the data and then you have to use your experience to say, is this going to work for us or not? Robin, a bit of a tricky morning here in Mexico. You've done free practice one and free practice two. I know the car's in pieces behind us, but what have you learned during those sessions and what are the engineers now looking at in the data? First of all, the track has always improved me in FP1 um, and also in FP2, because you start with a, like, a greasy track without no rubber at all. So the data it always looks quick and quicker, but I have a good teammate to compare to. Uh, we have quite always a similar speed. 
So uh, it's quite handy for the team to check and, and learn from each other. But yeah, so far everything goes well and then the engineer is looking for little issues, uh, everything to get everything sorted before the qualifying race. So the engineers feed back to you with a report from what they've found and then you then work off that? Yeah, we also feed back to them uh, of the problems we had or the feeling we had in the race or quali or whatever. So it's all back to back and then eventually we all come back together before the next simulator. How do you find it compares with the data that you've got in the simulator that you run in before you turn up here to when you get out on the real track? Simulator is getting quite close. Uh, each year they will improve. Like 10 years ago, simulator weren't even in the game yet. Uh, it's getting more and more important, especially now in Formula E. Uh, testing is, is not allowed on the track. Can we go to street circuits? It's not possible to drive on, on street circuits. So uh, it's a really uh, nice toy and very important toy to have. It's good uh, preparation for the weekend. It's all looking for those tiny little improvements. Exactly, a little thing can be uh, a place or two here. So in Formula E we can see how vital the data is in informing race strategy. But it's not just in the world of high-end racing that we're seeing the use of sensors growing exponentially. The use of sensors such as semiconductors is enabling the car industry more widely to push ahead with autonomous driving. In fact, it's semiconductors that are allowing us to develop things like parking assist, collision avoidance and emergency braking techniques. And semiconductors are becoming more and more responsive to things like heat and light. Sensors are designed to try and replicate the work of the human eye and although we may not be quite there yet, it's clear that the technology is advancing so fast that it's transforming the look of the cars on our roads. So the data we're collecting from little tiny sensors like this on the Formula E cars of today is changing the very nature of how you and I will be driving on the road in years to come.